CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Well, the Truth and Recre uh, Reconciliation Commission is looking into abuse of First Nations children at residential schools across the country, including some on Vancouver Island, and says the education system must tell the story of the victims and the survivors up to uh, students today. It is just one of 20 recommendations from the Commission. Our Andrew Johnson has been looking at the report. He joins us now live with more. Andrew. Hudson, the new report into what has been called an assault on Aboriginal children, their families and their culture says the key to healing is education. As we first told you last night, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission says all Canadian public schools should teach kids about what happened in Native residential schools. Close to 150,000 First Nations children were forced into the church-run schools for more than 120 20 years where they, ke they were kept away from their families and often faced abuse and neglect. The commission says there is a lot of misinformation and ignorance among the Canadian public and healing can't happen until the truth is taught. It's a great day today and I say that because it's um, I think a tremendous vindication for survivors. Survivors said to us, I've told my story many times but nobody will believe me. I've told my story many times and it's so hurtful. I don't want to say it again. The report also suggests schools hold education campaigns about the history and impact of residential schools in their communities. It also requests a framed copy of Prime Minister Harper's historic formal apology to residential school survivors be displayed in every secondary school in the country. Survivors say the release of this interim report is another step toward finding peace. Though we still have a long road ahead of us, it is only by shining bright light in the darkest corners of our history that we will ensure that the history will never be repeated again. And Reconciliation Commission will deliver its full report in 2014. Hunts and representatives from the commission are coming to the island next week. They'll start by hosting a forum slated for Port Hardy on Monday. The last residential school closed in 1996. All right, Andrew Johnson will be there. Thank you. You're welcome. Our students on the Saanich Peninsula are learning about another dark part of the past, the Holocaust, and they are sharing what they have learned by creating a public exhibit. Grade 7 and 8 students at North Saanich Middle School set up a Holocaust and Human Rights Museum in their gymnasium. Last night, the students were giving guided tours showcasing their Second World War projects. The goal is to turn a tragic part of the past into a period of understanding. It makes me feel sick to my stomach, learning or hearing about it, that so many people were hurt in so many ways. Well, we really just want to get it out that um, to, for some people who aren't too familiar with this kind of topic, because it is one that needs to be passed down to like before the people who are like, say, like main survivors who are still alive to this day, they need to pass on the message before they pass on. This is the third year the students have created their Holocaust exhibit. The Calgary Police Service is recommending charges against a Victoria man. They say a woman uh, forced a woman into prostitution. An 18-year-old Calgary woman uh, met the man online on a dating website last April. After moving to Victoria to be with him, the woman claims that she was forced to sell her body. The victim was able to return to Calgary in December of 2011, at which time it's alleged the suspect engaged in coercive and threatening behavior towards the victim and her family. The Calgary Police Service was called in December of 2011 and immediately began an investigation. On Tuesday, February 14, 2012, a man was arrested at the Calgary International Airport by the Calgary Police Service as he disembarked a domestic flight from Victoria. 31-year-old Jeremy Wayne Broker has been charged with one count each of procuring a person to become a prostitute, living off the avails of prostitution, extortion and obstruction. Police say Broker is originally from Michigan but was living in Victoria. Charges have now been laid against two men caught in possession of stolen copper wire. Saanich police were tipped off by the regional crime unit over the weekend after police say two suspicious men were seen riding bicycles on Glanford Avenue. When the officers stopped the pair, they noticed a large piece of heavy industrial copper wire in a trailer attached to one of the bikes. It's really much a crime of opportunity, so if they find a large amount of copper uh, that's easily accessible, it could very easily turn into uh, you know, a large theft as well. 
Sanage police say the theft of copper wire is dangerous. It can be deadly if you try to cut it when it's live. Well, a car salesman on the island may be looking for new work tonight, and thanks to a potential customer with a heavy foot, Sanage police stopped a vehicle on the Pat Bay Highway yesterday. The cops say he was going more than 130 kilometers an hour. It turns out that the driver behind the wheel was test driving the vehicle, and the salesman was in the passenger seat. The officer called the dealership, then impounded the car. My understanding and speaking with that officer that uh, there may be some changes uh, in the employment status for that, uh, that particular salesman. A 25-year-old woman has been charged with excessive speeding and given a $400 speeding ticket. Well, just days after predictions of gasoline hitting a buck fifty a liter, there was a big jump overnight, and on the lower mainland, it's almost there already. A little cheaper on the island, but the price at the pump around Greater Victoria today had hit 126.9, a little less some places, a little more elsewhere. Gas prices have been surging all across the country, rising more than 23 cents per liter in the last two weeks. The prices ranged from $1.36 in Halifax to $1.29 in Toronto, $1.39 in Yellowknife, and $1.40 or more in Metro Vancouver. Prices cheaper on the prairies. Part of the blame on the increase in the price of oil is the tensions in Iran. Yeah, not feeling good. I was driving home last night and I saw 140 and I was like... Oil has been going up every day now for almost two weeks. But when the oil jump, when the gas prices jumped here from 127 to 134, I thought, okay, that's why that's happening. But now this jump to 141 doesn't make a lot of sense. It would, it's a very big jump in a very short period of time for a fairly small jump in the oil price. If you want to check the lowest and highest prices in your area, log on to victoriagasprices.com. Well, BC Ferries released its third quarterly financial report today, and it is not good. More heavy losses, more sharp declines in ridership. Ferries has posted a quarterly net loss of $23.1 million. That's nearly double the loss in the third quarter last year. BC Ferries says the quarterly results are affected by seasonal traffic, and that traffic in the quarter has been down sharply as well. Vehicle traffic down by 3.6%. Passenger traffic down an even 3%. The decline in traffic has been consistent over the first nine months of the fiscal year, but it's the biggest year-over-year -year drop in recent memory. A new report from the province suggests people in B.C. are living longer as death rates from cancer and other diseases are plummeting. The 2010 Vital Statistics report found that life expectancy in B.C. is climbing, and it remains the highest in Canada, averaging at about 82 years. The province says death rates fell from cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, and HIV. But mortality rates for chronic diseases such as diabetes is creeping up. Well, there wasn't as much snow there, but uh, a few centimeters came down Lake Cowichan today. The east coast of the island has been under a snowfall warning, but only a few communities have seen dustings so far. A peeping Tom has been arrested in Nanaimo after being caught peering into the windows of homes in the Westwood area. Just before 11 o'clock last night, a homeowner on Twiggly Wiggly Road called the RCMP after seeing a stranger in the backyard on their deck. The homeowner confronted the man and he ran away. Just moments later, police received another report of a man looking into windows, this time on Holland Road. A 19-year-old matching the description from both incidents was arrested in the area. RCMP now believe he could be involved in a number of similar incidents that have happened over the past few months. We are looking at him for the incidents in the last two to six months involving individuals going onto back decks or peering into windows of homes at VIU or in the Westwood area. We're asking the public to also take some responsibility for their own safety and ensure that their blinds are closed at night. Other things you can do is uh, to put gravel around the backside of your house. That'll alert you to any movements. Sensor lights are also effective. And to remove any ladders that can be used to access secondary levels of the home. The man has not been formally charged as yet. Police are looking for information on other incidents where people have seen someone peering into the windows at night but may not have reported it. If that's happened to you, you're asked to contact Nanaimo RCMP. Well, thieves broke into the quality foods store in the noose overnight, smashing the front windows and pushing over racks and displays once they got inside. Police say it happened at about uh, 3.30 this morning. Police arrived just moments later, but by then the thieves had already taken off. Uh, two individuals had entered the store. Uh, they uh, went directly to an area near the till. Um, we believe that they were in search of cigarettes and uh, didn't get what they were after and immediately left the area. 
The vehicle that uh, we believe that they came in is a 1995 burgundy in color Dodge Caravan. This morning about 8 o'clock we had a report from Qualicum Beach that a vehicle fitting that description was stolen and uh, we believe that both are connected. Police say the two men were wearing black hoodies and were covering their faces. Investigators are looking for a uh, red Dodge Caravan, likely an early to mid-90s model. A search is underway in the waters off Tofino for a man who was last seen heading out in his canoe. Gabriel Lavoie left from his waterfront home on Campbell Street at about noon Wednesday. His canoe was found capsized Thursday between two small islands in an inlet. Lavoie is 28 years old, about 6 feet tall, 165 pounds. He was last wearing jeans, a green Helly Hansen raincoat and a yellow life jacket. West Coast Search and Rescue is working with RCMP to search the area, the ground, water and air for any sign of the missing man. The push may soon be coming to shove in the teachers dispute in the province. The BC Teachers Federation says its members will vote on whether to escalate their limited teaching only job action to a full scale walkout on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. It was yesterday that the education minister said his staff has begun preparing back to work legislation to end the dispute that has gone on for more than a year. The governor general in Ottawa today honored two Vancouver Island men for their bravery. Frank William Taylor from Ladysmith received a governor general's medal of bravery in a ceremony at Rideau Hall. Taylor was recognized for rescuing a neighbor who'd been trapped inside his burning house. Also at the ceremony, the late Philbert Trong from Victoria was honored. Trong's father accepted the award posthumously. Trong died trying to protect a friend after an altercation outside a downtown Victoria nightclub. A stranger had pulled a gun during a fight on the street. Trong stepped in front and took a bullet to the chest. Well, an annual fundraiser for Nanaimo's Haven Society will get underway very soon at the Coast Bastion Inn in Nanaimo. One of the organizers of the event also serves as the MC and auctioneer for the evening's events. And it probably comes as no surprise to you that that person is our own Bruce Williams. And uh, he has a look at the evening's plans for us. Bruce. Thanks, HUD. The event tonight is called Behind the Mask. That is, of course, referring to hiding behind the mask of domestic violence, which too often happens in our society and in our communities these days. So the Haven Society is raising some funds with this event tonight. We're going to have some fun. Now, one of the people that's going to be the keynote tonight, take a look at this. This is something that we did that aired on CTV News on the weekend. Uh, did something with a woman named Tracy Myers. Tracy is a person who can take a look at artwork that's created by children. Now, as you know, kids very often and just kids can't tell you what's on their mind. They can't really account to you what's going on, especially if that's a particularly traumatic thing in their lives. So kids will draw pictures, which someone like Tracy will take a look at, and then through that, they can interpret what's going on in the kids' minds. So that's the Children Who Witness violence program something again that very often hides behind a mask and we don't talk about it all that often but we're going to raise some money for that here tonight we're also going to have some fun with some entertainment uh, and there is information here as well for people that want to find out more about the vision courage and leadership of the haven society so on a rainy old night on vancouver island we're going to have some fun big shout out to uh, coastal community credit union that are the major sponsors to make this event happen tonight so i'm the mc and the auctioneer we're going to sell stuff and raise some money have a great weekend whatever you're up to and we'll see you back here next week.